What's the very first thing you printed on your brand new 3D printer? Chances are it was this, the 3D Benchy. But why? Should you? And what's it for? Well, let's find out. In 2015, near the beginning of home 3D printing, Swedish 3D tech company Creative Tools well, they needed a benchmark to give them consistent testing results. And this benchmark 3D print, well, it needed to test a lot of things, making sure they were printing similarly across multiple machines. And thus, from benchmark, the Benchy was created. They immediately uploaded it for free to Thingiverse with a Creative Commons license, and that made it legal for everybody to use however they wanted, even commercially. And it's still there. They even created a website to go along with it. I'll have links to some of those Benchies and more in the description. By the way, did you know that Benchy isn't actually its name? What you talking about? Well, not the full name at least. The full name given by Creative Tools is 3D Benchy, the Jolly 3D Printing Torture Test. I think we'll just stick with Benchy. That's a good idea. So other than a neat little print, why should any of us print the Benchy? Well, I admit that while I knew there were a lot of reasons to print the Benchy, I honestly didn't know just how many reasons there are. Printing the Benchy is pretty straightforward, but any tests you plan to do using the Benchy are only useful if you print it at its normal one-to-one -one scale. And that also means using your normal standard settings with absolutely no changes, and that includes supports, no brim, no raft. After printing, the quickest and easiest tests you'll get out of the Benchy will be the ones you can see right off or on the build plate. Take a close look at all those openings. Are there any wispy strings? A few here and there should be okay, but if there's a lot, you might need to look at some settings. Retractions, print speed, filament temp, and more could be the cause. I did a video a while back on stringing, so check that out if you're concerned about how your Benchy looks. Also, take a look at the boat in general. Are there any gaps, zits, blobs, big lines, other obvious problems? If so, you're going to want to start over with a full calibration run and check those filament temps. Well, if you run across any of these obvious issues with your Benchy, now's the time to look into it. Fix these issues, and then you should be able to just fly through the remainder of the tests if you want to do them. Now let's look at all the parts that make up the Benchy. They each have a very specific size, and if you really want to get into the measurements, you're going to need to break out those calipers. Starting at the top, let's look at the chimney. The depth of the hole should be 11 millimeters, and the hole itself should be 3 millimeters. The top of the chimney should have a measurement of 7 millimeters. Next is the bridge roof. This should be 23 millimeters, and you might also want to look at that roof itself. If you see some line stepping, well, that's actually normal. But if you see really bad line stepping or layer shifting here or elsewhere, well, that's not normal. This could be a bed height or Z offset issue. The overall length and width of the benchy is important as well. The length should be 60 millimeters and the width is 31 millimeters. Well, if you notice that one direction is a little slimmer or larger than it should be and the other direction is just fine, well, you could be having some dimensional issues with either X or Y. Well, based on how you printed your benchy, you're going to want to check those steps. This will also be apparent in most of the other square parts, and it might even show up on the round parts like the chimney, and those could appear to be oval instead of a true circle. Checking the height is done with two different parts. From the bottom to the top of that cargo box in the back, that should be 15 and a half millimeters. From the bottom to the top of the chimney should be 48 millimeters. Next, let's look at a few of the openings, see how our overhangs and bridging settings are working. Up front is the hawse pipe. I think we call it a porthole. <laughs> anyway, the inside of that is four millimeters, and if you can measure it, the extrusion away from the hole is supposed to be 0.3 millimeters. Good luck with that. The front square window comes in at 10.5 millimeters wide and 9.5 millimeters high. That back circular window should be 12 millimeters on the outside, 9 millimeters on the inside, and again, it should extrude from the wall uh, to about 0.3 millimeters. Even the angle of the bow, that area up front that rounds up from the bottom, well, that has a very specific measurement. It should give you an angle of 40 degrees from the bottom to the middle. In case you don't know, 45 degrees is pretty commonly accepted as about the maximum angle you should print without supports. And the bridge roof even has an angle measurement. It should be five and a half degrees, just in case you wanted to check a little bit more. 
The doors don't have a measurement, at least that I found, but the two doors and two windows give us four great checks for those overhanging bridging settings I mentioned. If you notice drooping or sagging or other defects in these areas, there's a few things you can check. Lack of adequate cooling is probably your main culprit though. Make sure your fan settings are correct for your type of filament, and you can also double check that your fans are actually working as all that shaking and moving can occasionally knock something loose. If your print speed is too fast can also affect your flow rate, which is another thing to check. Well, if you're curious about flow rate and things like that, check out my video where I walk you through some calibration tests for flow rate and related settings. Wow, that was a lot of tests on one little boat. I do want to point out that every printer and even your filament can and probably will cause some slight variations in these measurements. As long as everything's pretty close, you're probably fine, but you know, if something's wildly off, I mean, even a half a millimeter or more, you probably want to investigate a little bit further. Also, you should know, Benchy was never meant to be an ultimate calibration test for your 3D printer, but it can be a great first indicator of problems or lack of problems. Not to mention, it's just a neat little print. When you print it out, you can say you've joined in with millions of others in printing the Benchy. That's what I'm talking about! Michael at Teaching Tech has an awesome calibration website to help you with figuring out a lot of the more in-depth calibration settings, and I'll have that link and more in the description. You've probably seen quite a few benches online that look really different from the one we've been talking about for calibration. And that's a testament to how much people in the 3D printing community are really enthralled by the little benchy. I've printed out quite a few, these are some, but one of the neatest ones are these multicolored versions that came from my little Bamboo A1 Mini and my Bamboo P1S. Some of the different options though can be kind of weird. You're weird, Elliot. Weird like a fox. For instance, here's the Jaws Benchy, and that fortunately doesn't have anybody on board. And this Voronoi Benchy looks really nice, but that's definitely not watertight, and apparently neither is this Octo Benchy. And speaking of not being watertight, I don't know that I would trust the Bench Tannic to stay afloat. But for Christmas, we have a Benchy ornament. And though it may look like a hunk of junk, the Millennium Benchy has more than meets the eye. Now an aircraft carrier Benchy looks like it may actually float, and that Benchy Command X just begging for a flyby from the Benchy fighter jet. I think we all love printing articulated flexi models, but I really wasn't sure how this flexi benchy was going to turn out, and even a benchy bowl to hold your coins, or other benchies. There's even a tiny little benchy valve stem cap for your tires. And last, but certainly not even close to the least, is benchy rock. I think benchy's getting a big head from all this love. On top of all those and more great prints, did you know that Benchy is available to download as separate parts? You can use it for multicolor prints, or maybe you want to print it out as a weird puzzle. Also, have you ever noticed that text on the bottom, ct3d.xyz? Well, if you've noticed and you've gone to that website, you'll already know it's a forwarding address to Benchy Creator Company, Creative Tools. And one more quick tip in this section. Did you know that benchies can fit inside each other, sort of? Well, just take one of them and flip it over and around and then just put the chimney into each other's cargo box and there you go. Now you can put twice as many benchies on your shelf. Yay. What do you mean? <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? If you think your benchy print is telling you to make some changes and check some things out, just remember this one thing at a time. Yes, it can be frustrating and time consuming, but in the long run, you'll actually save some time by just making one change and running a test. Remember, for things like first layer issues, you can always stop your print after a few layers and then check things out. If you found a great Benchy print or there's something you wanna to add to the conversation, just leave us a comment and please like and subscribe. Have fun, print a Benchy, and let's help each other out as we learn, create, and amaze.